So we're just going to use the bio light here to charge up my cell phone. We've got good cell reception in this area. So I've got a few little wood chips to kind of get things started, along with some birch bark. And a nice sized pile of wood I've got built up here. Hopefully that'll give me at least a half an hour of burn time. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to put the stove together and I'll show you how that looks. So the unit comes out. One piece sits inside the other. So there we go, the bio light's put together. We're going to get this thing fired up. All right, I have the stove stuffed full of birch bark, as you can see, and we're just going to light it up. So just pick a piece of birch bark to light, get it going, give it a few seconds for it to catch other birch bark, and then you want to turn your fan on. It's lit. Finger on the button, turn it on, there's the fan. Well, it's uh, going. This is kind of what it does. It's hot as hell. So I'm just letting some bark and some wood burn down. And I'm going to start adding the regular fuel. We're almost ready to charge. So when the green bar above the USB port turns green, it means it's ready to go. The phone is charging up. Right now it's at 34%. And this is the bay we're in. The sun is setting. Dry wood crunching under my feet. The boats are asleep for the night. And I'm going to have a fire. And uh, here's the Swedish fire torch. We're going to light it up. Bad boy going. So it's a good way to start a fire. It burns right down, you can add wood to it. There's my wood pile. So at this point, you could be putting a cup over that and uh, warming up some water, cook some food, whatever you want to do. So I kind of turned the uh, Swedish fire torch into a fire, but it's a nice fire. Well, it's the morning of day five for me. Chris is just putting his boat in the water. I just got to get my life jacket on and I'm ready to go. We're all packed up at camp here on Spar Island. So we're just getting ready to take off here, and uh, Chris was just lighting up his camera to make a video, and we just heard thunder. Um, so we're going to, I think, forego Victoria. We're going to head straight back toward uh, Flatland, and then if uh, it does start to thunder and lightning, we have a bit of shelter. But we're going to get on the way before it starts to pick up. So we've just gotten underway. Uh, we're just leaving the bay that we're in, and uh, we're heading towards Mink Island out there in front of us. So we're about uh, 1.8 kilometers away from Mink Mountain, and uh, we definitely have some thunderstorms rolling in. So we're going to have to uh, just keep our eyes peeled in the sky, watch for lightning, that kind of thing. Of course, it's beautiful and sunny over on this side. Look at that view. We went all that way, all the way around that island, out to these islands, behind them, out behind us. It's just been a beautiful trip so far. So we're just approaching Mink Island. That's it over here. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit. Nothing too bad yet. So, it's uh, day five and uh, we're just paddling back towards Flatland Island and our cars. And we've just made the decision that we're just going to call it. Um, no point in camping in the same spot twice. There's nothing at Flatland anyway, really. Other than just setting stuff up and taking it down for the sake of it. So, so we're just rounding Wiley Point. There's Wiley Point right there. Little beach in the back, not a nice one or anything. Almost back to the cars, just puddling around now. 
6507 kilometers, moving average 5.3.